welcome to the Jodie Bunting podcast where we're today talking about South Derbyshire health and fitness and my special guest today is the lovely Heather Wheeler who's the Member of Parliament for South Derbyshire. Hi Heather. Hello Jodie, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you very much. Now you've been my local MP for 13 years here in uh, South Derbyshire and I'm probably lucky do you think because I've never had to come across you before directly. Is this a good thing? It's a it's a tremendous thing. I mean, the thing about South Derbyshire is that we're about 110,000 people now and 40, 43,000 front doors. So um, wow. it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Uh, and very, very sadly, uh, with the boundary changes, I'm actually going to be losing help. Hatton, Hilton, and the Northwest Parishes, the Suttons and no. the Church Broughtons. And I know, I know, I know. But so you, you guys are going to be going in, or all things being equal, are going to be going into Derbyshire Dales. So you will, ah. all things being equal, being looked after by the lovely Sarah Dines. So, uh, oh, yeah, so no, that... no, but you're, you're mine until the election. That's how it works. <laughs> so. Right. Well, I'm glad I caught you then before the election <laughs> then, because this was my last chance, wasn't it? Mm. So well, I let's talk your last a... chance. But... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about South Derbyshire, first of all. So I saw that you were born in uh, Norwich, you grew up in kind of London and you move up here in the 80s. So what do you love about South, South Derbyshire? Um, I love the fact that it's so clean. I love the yeah. fact that I've, I've got more moss growing on my flat roofs. I have to go up there and get the stuff off because it's not really good, is it? But um, <laughs> it's just unbelievably clean. The fresh air is astonishing. Um, I love the fact that uh, it's beautiful. Uh, you know, we're all within 10 minutes of some amazing countryside. Yeah. Uh, one, of, one, of, one of the brilliant facts that I love chucking out is that we're actually one of the um, most prolific places for people to come for one, two and three day stays. And that's a lot oh. to do with it down south. We're very close to um, uh, commuting distance to the NEC for yeah. all the exhibitions. So people will come along for a few days to pop down there. Uh, and Crufts, you can't get a and b for love and the money for Crufts. <laughs> it's absolutely jammed. And then um, also we're, we're close either side to Birmingham Airport and East Midlands Airport. So again, people come to us, stay for a few days and then fly off places. It's wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And of course, we've got incredible companies in the area. Um, we've got Nestle, we've got um, JCB, we've got Toyota, loads of people work at Alston Bombardier, loads of people work at Rolls Royce. I mean, just tremendous stuff, you know. And I, I went to visit a company in the back end of SWAD and really tucked away, really private. And there were a bunch of ladies that make the inner linings to the Airbus um, wings. How about that? Wow. I mean, why, you know, I just love it. We, we yeah. do amazing stuff in our place. Amazing. I went to work in Egypt for a few years. And when I came back, it just made me love this place where we live. Because, you know, when you've been somewhere a bit, quite a bit, you kind of, you don't see the beauty anymore. So I think this is the good thing about traveling because you come back and realize we live in a more amazing place than we thought we did. Yeah, and, and I I am fascinated with the way our tourism offer now is, uh, to use a dreadful um, you know phrase that, that us people in Westminster tend to use, but um, the fact that we've got all these log cabins being put up specifically for holiday um, yeah. uh, uh, opportunities, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, in fact, it used to be that our, GD, our uh, local economy was some local work and then another an awful lot of outside work. And then all of a sudden, I think we're probably the other way around. I think probably more people live and work in South Derbyshire than commute now. We've ah, still got loads right. down the bottom end that go down to Birmingham and stuff. You know, you know what it's like going in Swad, the, the Birmingham accents everywhere. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and, and it was Birmingham came to Tamworth and Tamworth came to South Derbyshire. So. Have you stayed in one of those glumping things, by the way? Because I never... No, no, I... I, I, I I presumably next door is going to snore, and I mean, I'm, I, I, I just need the peace and quiet to sleep. I really, really, I need pitch black. I, I have a specific sort of um, uh, light on my uh, radio clock that you know, so it doesn't click. Because I used to have one where the number flicked over, oh, and like yeah. at three in the morning, it would wake so me up. Annoying. Nonsense, which is crazy, isn't it? Anyway, so peace and quiet and pitch black. Uh, so um, underneath the stars doesn't really do it for me. I don't think, no. Jodie. <laughs> 
Right. So what I wanted to talk about today in the podcast is actually just generally the South Derbyshire health and wellness option. So when somebody says to you health and wellness, what things have we got here in South Derbyshire? Um, I'd like to hone in on a couple of things that um, started off with people talking at the GP about what would help them to get better and to have a, a more rounded life. Um, and so with certain um, opportunities, they came up with these walking clubs. And yeah. it, it's not just um, going for a six mile hike at a weekend or whatever, but just for an hour at the lunchtime, meeting up and all sorts of different people just literally going for a walk for an hour or 50 minutes or something. Yeah. And I just thought, how sensible is that? You've got your exercise. You're letting your brain calm down from the morning stuff and the afternoon stuff. You're meeting all sorts of other people. And sometimes people are, have a real problem with loneliness. And, and yeah. although they might be at work or they might be looking after the grandkids or whatever, but they, they need something else. And so these, these walking clubs, I think, are really good. And I, and I hope that they um, may... Uh, expand right the way across South Derbyshire and then the other thing the, the obvious one I would say is get yourself down to Rosiston Forestry Centre goodness me it does yeah. you good it's it's some of the site is on a bit of a hill and it, it's not a, a lung breaker a heartbreaker it's 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 just gentle take your time they've got really good paths and um, they've even got those um uh, mobile scooters if somebody if, if one of your group is not so good and you yeah. can hire those and use those and it's just I love Ross Liston Forestry Centre I think it's wonderful I've done the park run there on a Sunday morning and it's just great to see how many hundreds of people there and it's families everything it's so involved yeah. I've, I've got this brilliant photo of me with a, a, a megaphone so you know, three two one go you know sort of thing so uh, that's as close as I got to the park run I have to tell you Jody. I'm afraid afraid I'm getting on a bit and it's just not going to happen so but people get motivated you know when they see the London Marathon and stuff yeah. like that but this is why I love park run because it feel you know you've got that same energy as if it was some annual event but it happens every week right on our doorstep which is great yeah and, you know, we had to go through such a nonsense in Westminster because certain councils were charging people for doing it. And wow. I know the good park run people have a little bit of an administration fee, but, you know, there's an awful lot that goes on with it. And you can just join in, yeah. try it out for a bit. And if you want to get more involved, then you sort of join the club sort of thing. And and we're all used to paying a little bit to join a club, aren't we? But yeah, uh, yeah so certain when, when council started charging for doing it, I just thought, yeah, how short-sighted, how short-sighted. 100%, that's good. Right, so I work at one of the Active Nation sites. So there's two in our area, which is the Green Bank in Swad and also um, at Hall Leisure Centre, where I'm based as well. Uh, what's your experience with the charity Active Nation and also our wonderful leisure centres? Well, we're incredibly lucky to have them. Um, it was um, a big decision. Uh, a long time ago now, a few years ago now, uh, when I probably, I was trying to think when I probably was still on the council because I, I came off the council in 2011, but I think we'd made the decision before then. And um, we'd heard about Active Nation, um, you know, they, they've grown enormously, but yeah. they have the ethos of wanting you to be part of the team, wanting you to be part of the club. They want to encourage you to do more to keep fit, but also they've got lots of different sort of taster sessions and to bring you in type sessions. And um, so I, I'm, you know, hats off to, to uh, the, the, the group. And um, it's great that you're one of the, the trainers. Excellent. And, and you're at, you're at Etwell, you don't go to Swap, no? I do cover there sometimes, but yeah, right. Etwell is my my local centre. Right, and I think um, I mean, proof... it, it's, it's, yeah. Sorry, please. I was just going to say, I think that the proof of their dedication to the members is they don't call them members; they actually call them supporters. And I just love this, you know, the supporters this, the supporters that. It just makes yeah. the, the members actually feel a part of it. Well, it is, isn't it? We've all been on a journey. Again, a dreadful Westminster phrase. I do apologise, but um, you've been down here long enough. You start using the blooming phrases. But um, the 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 thing what I like about Toyota is that they're not staff; they're members. 
So oh. Action Nation have, have taken this to, to the next level. You know, yeah. you're not you're not um, a paying guest. You're not a, a, a staff member. You're you're a you're a supporter. So uh, why not? Why not? I think it's nice. An active nation, I think a lot of people don't realize it's actually a charity as well. So it's not just a yeah. business organization. You know, they've got the fundamentals of being a registered charity, which is good. Yes, they 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 came and and made a pitch to the council to say this is how we'd like to run it and we would have this ethos. So all these years later, um, it is good to know that uh, they are sticking with the original uh, charitable state and uh, status and ethos. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my favourite thing to teach at Active Nation is aqua. Have you ever been to an aqua class, Heather? I, I have, I have. And um, believe it or not, it was at the swimming pool at the other side of Utoxeter. And um, I would drop my daughter off at school because she went over that way. So I am now going back. Ooh, let's go with 30 years, shall we? So yeah. um, 30, and, and what I used to do particularly was... Um, I would do three weeks of this every morning and then go skiing. And I had to get myself really fit back again wow. to go skiing. Uh, and that was the only way I could do it. Um, for, for years, when, um, when, when Harriet was still at school, I was able to go to the, the gym at, uh, at Greenbank and, and try that for about um, an hour or so. And it was just so strange. I obviously did get fitter. But nothing seemed to move oh, around me, and 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 I seemed to put, I seemed to be heavier, and I came to the conclusion that maybe muscle weighed more than fat. And after a while, I just, you know. So. True. The other problem as well with exercise, it does make you hungry. I have a lot oh, of swimmers well. that say this. You know, after the gym, they're completely ravenous. Pint of milk. That's the answer. Pint of milk. Yeah. Get I mean, that protein in. Exactly. It's, and, and it's a better way of getting liquid into your body that needs it than just straight pint water. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Top tip, top nutrition tips from Heather there today. I was the chairman of the all party parliamentary group for dairy. So I look after our dairy farmers and all the rest of it. So, so this Ticking is all it. the boxes. Absolutely. Now, in my village of Hatton, uh, we've our parish council have got us a gym. So it's a, not the kids one. It's the adults gym now here. Have you visited that? Have you seen no. that? No, no. Where's that then? So it's oh, it's oh, called oh, the Salt oh, Book. I don't know whether you know the Salt Brook Trail. It's the, the yes. trail that Nestle. Um, Around the back of the new build. Yeah. Yes. And they've got right. the new gym there. They put it in during lockdown. Right, so the outdoor gym. You got me worried. I have oh. seen the outdoor gym. Forgive me. I, I was thinking they'd taken a building on. I think, crikey, that parish council are being a bit yeah. in innovative. <laughs> the outdoor gym, yes. Let right, me clarify that. Yeah, I have seen it. I, I think I may have elegantly lent against something for a photo, but okay. uh, I, I have not um, <laughs> pursued it in depth. There we are. So you, 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 do you actually stand there and help people use it? Well, I have done a few classes around there with some clients and actually showed them how to use it. Because I think yeah. a lot of these things, they be can be quite daunting to people who've yeah. never used it before, especially yeah. when it is outdoors and you think people might be watching you. Absolutely. Or... You're going to look like a right chump, aren't you? You pull this bit, <laughs> something else comes and whacks you, you know. So... <laughs> but what do you think to these outdoor gyms? Do you think they're solution or do you think it's kind of, you know, do you think it's a good thing? Um. I quite often drive through Burton to get to Hatton or to get to Derby or wherever. And so over the washlands, they've got them there. And what I've seen people doing is a, a proper run, jog, whatever. And then they stop and they do 15 minutes at the outside gym and then they finish their run off. So from right. that point of view, it's breaking up um, the, the style of exercise they're having. And also it's 15 minutes. So whether it's... um part of a warm up or even a warm down I yeah. don't know but but Jody you could tell us more professionally about that <laughs> Well, I, I I feel really sad because I walk past there most days, especially when, when we're doing lockdown, and it upsets me that not more people use it. So right, yeah, right. I, I tell I you what, we'll you've... yeah, we'll do, we'll do a bit in the local paper about it. What a good idea! I what think a good you idea. know, yeah. just giving some practical advice on what to do with it because it's good yeah. having them there, but actually get people to use it, I think, is a is an essential part and especially because it's free you know yeah how absolutely. many people would love a free gym and there it yeah. is in the sunshine yeah. and uh well i i, I do encourage another group of people to to join a free 
gym. It's called the um, the green blue gym. And that means that they can deliver all my leaflets by going for lovely walks. And and then we just have this discussion about did the bo- the dog bite you or not? And, you know, we it used to be my claim to fame. I used to know every single dog behind every single gate in South <laughs> Derbyshire. But uh, after after lockdown, there are so many more dogs. I think I've given up on that one. Yeah. But, you know, this is, again, the benefits of living in our area. You know, you just cannot beat the outdoor walking. And that was something, again, lockdown bought for me. I was cycling. I was walking in another local area and my health improved. I lost weight during lockdown. So, you know, we can't underestimate the power of just living in such a great area where we can walk down by the river if you're in here in Hatton. Yes. I mean, I I do agree with you. Um, I mean, one of the things I mean, you know, you're you're the famous guy on this call, not me. And, and, you know, you're infamous for the amount of weight you lost. But really interesting. You you toned up and you still lost more weight through lockdown. That's interesting. Yeah, it was. I think it was because when you when you are a fitness instructor, you kind of tick your fitness boxes teaching your classes but when I had to think about it myself Uh, I got myself a new bike and I was challenging myself and pushing myself in different ways than I would as an instructor Um, so this was the the real thing for me in lockdown that helped me improve my health and fitness was actually just doing it for me instead of you know just doing it as a job which uh, you know it's probably the same in every walk for life isn't it absolutely I um I, I sort of walk around the outside of the house and the garden and you know you once you've done that 10 times you're going stir crazy aren't you I mean it was still beautiful the birds were there and the pheasants were popping up and and and, and the crows having a go and all the rest of it but um it was just I, I needed more but I didn't re I didn't go for long walks outside and I don't yeah. really know why um I mean, I, well, I know why, because it was 18 hours a day on the computer sorting people's <laughs> problems out. But uh, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. But uh, yes, no, I think I didn't get that opportunity like you to to get on a bike and go for a decent ride. But, um, but there is did. something as well about Little and Often, Heather. I must say, uh-huh. I'm a big fan of Little and Often. Doing something yeah. 10 minutes every day is much healthier than doing a, a, right. a you know a big walk once a week. I, or I feel like I'm getting a, a free course. Jodie, <laughs> this is fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> right. Oh, um, when I used to work down south, I used to work with with a, a PCT in Kent. Uh, okay. And I found out there through their local mayor that they had this kind of the pocket of money to fight obesity or to help with health and fitness that they never used because they, they kind of didn't know what to do with it. Oh, Okay. Do you do we have this sort of pocket of money in our area? Sort of, sort of. Um, the the NHS have just gone through this enormous change, and we have um, the integrated care board now, and that used to be the primary care trust that you're talking about the pct yeah. we have an alphabet soup of acronyms we're doing very well anyway <laughs> so the icb now link in directly with the county council and they have a board of health and well-being and they trickle the money down to the district council and through the sports side of the district council uh, and the um, people that help out with grant funding side at the district council, um, they look after um, sort of general health in the area. So it would be um, anti-smoking, it would be very sadly issues about domestic violence, and then how to help them after and rebuild their um, life skills and um, and their confidence after yeah. such a, a dreadful situation. Um, but also then there is this opportunity for um, the green gym that fits in with a, a GP surgery. So um, it would it's the health and wellbeing board that, that we need to lobby for you to see what other little kernels of money can come down. So there's been some new um outdoor equipment in Newhall Park and it's taken oh, good no I don't know six years to get that done yeah. uh, but it's it's done now and um there was a nice little opening of that um and also uh, people are, are slightly doing it for themselves there's a there's a brilliant um boxing club uh, down at, at Newhall Park it's got the most fantastic um uh, mural on the outside with Jack Bedell of course you know so yeah. uh, it's it's really interesting so we've got three boxing clubs in South Derbyshire so that's another route as well that people um, feel that they can take to 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 help get them fit and uh, understand about the rules of life 
So what do you think in general terms, how do you think people can improve their health and fitness or what do you think needs to happen to help the, you know, the nation when it comes to obesity right. and health? Well, um, I know obesity is um, a very complicated problem and people are much more aware than I think they ever used to be about issues about pre-diabetes yes. and, and so um, our GPs, uh, and with the different um, medical practitioners that you now see at the GP, I mean, you see a specialist nurse on this or a specialist nurse on that, or even a, a, a pharmacy technician about other things. And that's really great that uh, one of the things, in fact, Jody, this is really great opportunity. Can I sort of tell the nation, please, you yes. know, when you think that you're going to go to the GP, don't worry, you may not see the GP because they've got a specialist practitioner nurse that will yeah. be day in, day out dealing with whatever it is. Quite often folk who have got diabetes are so used to seeing their diabetic nurse that it seems a bit weird to see the, doc the GP at all. Yeah. So, you know, please, if, if, you, if the reception uh, offers you um, a face-to-face -face meeting with one of these other practitioners who isn't your GP, please take it. Yeah. Because if they find something that you absolutely do need to see the GP, they will refer up. But nine times out of ten, they will be able to look after you very, very successfully. And generally, they are more trained in that area exactly. than the GP. So you're exactly. actually better seeing them, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, much better. I mean, I'm I'm going to um, see the specialist um, uh, nurse that deals with asthma. Um, in the last five years, I've now got asthma when I never had before, and yeah. and it's this funny thing where either the um, the temperature drops so much. You know, we were doing what minus eight, weren't we, a few weeks ago, and and I I literally could not catch my breath. It was just astonishing, and and so from using the inhaler twice a year, I was using it six times a day. Well, that's no good. Anyway, I'm now an awful lot better, awful. And I haven't used the inhaler for at least two weeks. So, oh, but, I'm, but I'm having, yeah, no, really good. So I'm having a um, face-to-face -face with the, the nurse practitioner on for asthma. And, and I know that that will do me a lot of good. Yeah. Now, my final question, I wanted to ask you about what people want versus what people need. As in, I'm a fitness instructor. I know what I'd like people to do. But they kind of have another idea of what they want to do. And I think you're the same as an MP. You're an elected person to do what the people want. But how do you get them to do what they you think they need, Heather? <laughs> well, uh, I'm really quite lucky. Uh, I mean, you know, I've been doing this politics lark since I was 22, which is not yesterday. But <laughs> the good news is I have um, a certain amount of experience and, and what actually is going on and off also how the system works yeah. so people will come to me and say we want to do x and i will say yeah that's really interesting have you thought about maybe trying to do y and if you think that maybe trying to do y might fit, then i think i can find a way through to the minister to help this happen and then so ultimately they do get what they need it's just that we've slightly helped them realize that needing and wanting is a different thing so um so that's that's a little bit of it but uh, i'm i'm mulling on the idea particularly um swaddling coat we've got the out of hours you know walk-in center that you have an appointment if you go to 111 what we don't have is a walk-in urgent care center and yeah. so at the minute, basically, you go to Burton A&E or you go to Derby A&E, or maybe you even go over to Loughborough or something like that, if you're that side of the constituency. But um, I think it could be that if we can get enough people training in different uh, medical uh, levels of professions, then having an urgent uh, care centre uh, in Swaddling Coat would be really, really good. I mean, I know Hatton, you know, so many of the Hatton people, they use their GP over um, in Tutbury. And yep, so you then, you're then you then part of the Staffordshire, um, I won't say mafia, you're part <laughs> of the Staffordshire, Staffordshire um, um, health people. And so you end up getting different services to the rest of the South Derbyshire people who, who are Derbyshire, right? Inter yeah. Interrelated care board, so Brook board. So it's, it's, it is a little bit still postcode -y, you know? And so it, it's kind of careful. so, 
it's so complicated because that river dove right next to me yeah. right now is not only the difference of the counties, but it's also the regions. It's East Midlands versus yeah. West yep. Midlands. It's a completely game, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, I, you know, again, I don't mean to bang on about how old I am because, um, <laughs> you know, this 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 old dog is not lying down. Let me tell you that. But um, the um, we we about twenty years ago we had a discussion about South Derbyshire District Council joining up with East Staffs. The borough and at the time it would it was almost looked like the borough would take us over well yeah. you think about it the other way around you think about now how absolutely thriving south derbyshire is and yeah. I, I you know god wouldn't you like to take over burton wouldn't that be fun <laughs> I, I think that would be absolutely brilliant <laughs> well just look at the hospitals derby and burton merged in the end so they did they never did. say never they, no, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll put that on as my um, election campaign for the election after the next one. How about that? OK, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> right, now we're in the countdown to Easter, so I've got to ask you, Heather, are you giving up anything for Lent? Well, how, can you help me give up stress for Lent? What do you think about that? Do you think that's going to happen? I, 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 I don't think that's going to happen, do you? I think this is a HR <laughs> issue down there in Westminster, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> no, OK, no, no, I'll no. I'll try and um, help by giving more meditation to the lovely people of South Derbyshire. Would that help, do you think? Oh, Jodie, that would be amazing. If you could just get them to, to just a couple of points down on the Richter scale would be brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So do you think I ought to be doing meditation myself then? That's interesting. Well, you know, I was thinking about this earlier when you said about the walking. Mm. Um, you know, walking in the countryside has been proven to actually be mm -hmm. a meditative effect on you as well. Yeah. So yeah. meditation is not something, you know, you don't have to sit there and hum with a Buddha. It's actually <laughs> just being outdoors in the countryside is a form of meditation. Yeah, we're the wonderful people at the, at the council, because Bob, uh, my husband, used to be the leader for quite a long time. And, and when he died very, very quickly of cancer, they... they they put some they planted some trees um down in in like a little um uh, area for just a few trees here and a few trees there sort of thing and I, yeah. I think maybe i ought to once a week go down there and just have a little meditate and 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 pat a couple of the trees on the head and say thank you yeah. that sounds perfect really that's good right heather thank that. you so <laughs> much where if people want to get in touch with you what's the pace best place to find you is it your facebook page your website <laughs> Yep. Um, website and um, email on the parliamentary system. So heather.wheeler.mp at parliament.uk. And it will get through to me. Please do. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Keep up Pleasure the great doing. work. And uh, yes, let's all meditate in the countryside. <laughs> That's the final word, I think. <laughs>